There are two different types of past tenses in Latin. There's the simple past, a statement like, I loved, something completed that happened at one time in the past. This is construed by the perfect tense in Latin. Then there is the continual or habitual past, a statement like, I was loving. This is represented by the imperfect tense in Latin. This video will cover the ways to form the imperfect tense. When we are reading a sentence in Latin, the imperfect tense is one of the easiest verb forms to identify. We look for the infix ba towards the end of the word. You may know what a prefix is, that's the small bit put at the beginning of the word, and a suffix is put at the end of the word, but an infix, like our ba, is placed in the middle of the word, or more specifically, at the end of the verb's present stem, but before the ending that tells us who the subject is. Here, let's example this. The verb amabat is in the imperfect tense, and we can break it apart to its individual units. First, ama is our present stem. This part gives us the meaning of the verb, loving. Next, we have the imperfect tense identifier, the infix ba. This shows us the tense, and we can even put an English translation to it, was. This is easy to remember because both ba and was share the same vowel sound. And finally, we have the t, which is the personal ending, the thing that tells us who was doing the loving. Since it's a t, we know that it's a he, she, or it. We can put all of these parts together, and we get amabat, loving was he, she, it. <clears throat> Let's turn that into better English. He, she, it was loving. Conjugating a verb in the imperfect tense is pretty regular for all conjugations. Generally, you first find the present stem. That's from the second principal part, the present infinitive, and remove the re ending. Onto this, we will place our infix ba, and then the personal endings m, s, t, mus, tis, unt. Remember that the M is an alternate ending for the I form. So for the first conjugation, amo amar, we take the present stem, ama, add our infix ba to all forms, and then our endings, mst, mus, tis, unt. And we get amabam, amabas, amabat, amabamus, amabatis, and amabant. Just for kicks, we should translate them. I was loving, you were loving, he, she, it was loving, we were loving, you all were loving, and they were loving. The same rules work for the second conjugation, verbs that end in a long ere, er, in their second principal part, like moneo, moner. We find our present stem, mone, add the ba, and then our personal endings. Monebam, monebas, monebat, monebamus, monebatis, monebant. The third conjugation ends its present infinitive in a short ere, er, like trajo, traher. We do the same steps. Our present stem is traha. Notice that the e becomes long, though. Then the ba, and then our personal endings. Trahe bam, trahe bas, trahe bat, trahe bamos, trahe batis, trahe bant. The fourth conjugation is the only one that breaks the rules. Fourth conjugation verbs end in a long ire, ir, in their present infinitive, like audio, audir. Our stem is going to add a long e at the end. So we have audi a, then we put our ba infix, then our personal endings. Audi a bam, audi a bas, audi a bat, audi a bamos, audi a batis, audi a bant. There's only one irregular verb in the imperfect tense that you need to know. It's the verb sum, esse. And it's imperfect is eram, eras, erat, eramus, eratis, errant. I was, you were, he, she, it was, we were, you all were, they were. There's one more note on translation of verbs in the imperfect tense. This tense is the past over a period of time, or more specifically, the continual or habitual past. This means the action could have happened over a period of time, like I was eating between 6 and 6.30. But it can also represent an action that happened more than once in the past. So for example, when I was young, we used to eat every night between 6 and 6.30. In English, we can also show a continual action by kept eating. So even though the food was horrible, we kept eating. With these three different translations of the imperfect tense, it's important to be sure you choose the best one. Often you can get by with the was eating translation, but every so often you should choose used to eat and to a lesser extent kept eating. You should keep these other translations in the back of your mind when you're reading.